If you are a Honda Ruckus owner, perhaps these rear turn signals are a familiar sight. The stalks that hold the signals out from the tail light are made of uh, some sort of rubber that deteriorates over time, regardless of whether or not this is stored out in the sun. Now this system is modular and these are easily replaced. It's only two wires for each blinker. The problem I find is that the offerings on Amazon.com are a little underwhelming to say the least. I can't find anything that looks like stock and if I try to buy an OEM style or a Honda certified part, they are ridiculously expensive. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and removed one of these and as you can see this rubber is just completely brittle and it's crumbling and what I'm going to attempt to do is design just this stalk portion of the blinker in CAD and then 3D print a replacement out of a more resilient material. That way, for those of us that have this problem, you should be able to 3D print or get something 3D printed that uses the original hardware and all it replaces is this portion that's made of this crumbly rubber. So that's the goal for today. We'll see how it turns out. I don't think I'm going to fully disassemble this end of the unit because, first of all, the reflector is heat welded in place. You see how the plastic um, ends here have been welded over to hold it in place. And I don't think I need to take it apart. I think I just need to design a part that indexes with these fingers. That's the plan. So once I get this fully stripped, and get all the rubber off of both the ends. I will be left with, I will be left with this hardware here. It's some steel hardware with those fingers that kind of bite into this end of the stalk, and then I'll have this end with the same type of fingers that will bite into the stalk on this side. Well, I was able to remove all the rubber off the fittings, and I guess I'm coming to the realization that my original plan is not going to work. So I'm moving on to plan B, which will require me to cut off these welded tabs here and remove this reflector. So I'm gonna do that now and then we'll see what's underneath this reflector. Okay, I got the reflector off and it looks like there's a clip that's just holding in this uh, metal piece here from inside the housing. So I'm gonna yank that clip and see if everything comes out. Okay, so I was able to get this, this clip out right here. It's kind of like a retaining clip that they use on brake lines. And now I should be able to pop this guy out like that. And so now this is, pre this is prepared for whatever repair I'm going to do. Since uh, I decided not to reuse these now, I think the plan I'm going to go with is taking one of those lamp repair kits with the hollow threaded rods and I will run a length of that threaded rod between the housing and the frame and then over that threaded rod I will you know print out something just decorative to make it a little bit more like stock and uh, so I don't know, what are we on now? Is this like plan C so far? I'm sure it'll change again, but uh, this is kind of the process, right? I, I'm not familiar with the uh, ruckus and kind of the pitfalls. I've already run into a couple other interesting things about like how the carburetor is buried in the, into the center of this sky. It's really hard to get to. Just for a little background, uh, my dad bought this ruckus and uh, it's had a little bit of trouble and so I've been helping him get it getting it back up and running properly and part of that is you know fixing these guys here 
and I wasn't planning on filming um, this, but then when I got here, I decided to. So all I've got is my phone and one hand ready because the other hand's holding the phone. So I apologize for the quality of this video, but I thought it would be interesting. And if I usually figure if I have this problem, somebody else has had this problem and I'm trying to come up with a creative solution for the problem. So let's see uh, what I can come up with. Okay, so here is my plan. I got the this lamp rod in, and what a lamp rod is, is it's a threaded rod that is hollow, so you can run wires down the center. And here's the uh, tail light assembly that the blinker attaches to. So what I, I could just do this with the lamp rod by itself, and it would work just fine. But I'm gonna try to mimic the old uh, stalk. I'm not gonna make it out of rubber, I might print it out, I don't know, I have a few different materials I could print it out of. I have TPU, which is kind of a rubbery soft material, and then I have PETG and, and PLA, which are rigid plastic materials. Um, since this is rigid, I don't think it really matters whether or not I use a soft material. This was a solid rubber type material and it was made to, you know, kind of bounce around with vibrations and stuff and it, that was supposed to protect it, uh, keeping it from breaking. But as you can see, it just broke down on its own. Yeah, I've already shown you these things here, but it, you know, the rubber itself is broken down. So I'll double nut it like this on the other side. So I'll insert it double nut it and then insert that end run the wires through the center insert that and double nut it on the inside of the blinker assembly and like i said i'll have some type of a decorative black stalk that goes around it here that'll, that'll sandwich it i'm also going to put some indexing uh, keys on the black piece so it'll keep this from wanting to uh, rotate and it'll so it doesn't end up spinning the blinker assembly so it keeps that nice and level so it's off to the computer to try to design something that'll work with this after i do i'm going to do a bunch of measurements and then it's off to the computer the design of this is pretty straightforward using fusion 360 i drew out a profile of the shape that i wanted and then i used the rotate tool to rotate it around an axis since it's going to be circular or more accurately conical in shape. It took some tweaking to get it to a shape that I was satisfied with and then I exported it as an STL and imported it into my slicing software to run a test print. Well, despite my best efforts on the first try, this the flats on this protrusion are about 90 degrees clocked in the wrong direction from this tab. And so basically what that translates to is that instead of having the blinker pointing straight out um, from, like in the same direction as the uh, tail light, it'll either be pointing up or pointing down. So I did a quick revision and I came up with these guys and I haven't tested them yet but I'm about to right now. As far as the fit though and everything, everything is just like a, a perfect fit. Uh, everything indexes uh, perfectly so I'm going to try these out now. Okay first I need to measure out the right length of this lamp rod and get a sharpie and I can mark it and cut it okay I probably want to give myself a little extra just in case I'll measure that and I'll cut that on the bandsaw all right in order to assemble this I have to pull the cable out through the blinker housing I won't make this mistake twice Thread on two nuts, 
Gonna get the nuts around the rubber grommet here. There we go. Thread it back out the hole. Grab one of your lamp tubes. Feed her through. Push and twist so you don't bind up that loom. Once the loom comes out the other side, you can grab it and pull. I guess I was wrong to put the the nuts on this side of the grommet. A little bit of persuasion, you'll get it on eventually. You just need to make enough room for that second nut to go on because that's the one that's going to lock everything down. All right. So I have no idea how I'm going to lock this down, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Next comes the printed stalk. The tab indexes the slot on the back of the, of the uh, blinker. And then the whole assembly passes through this hole. You can see me working it in there. Index that hole again. Okay. So there you go. That uh, quite the process, but it works. So all that's left to do is you want to grab another nut and double nut it on on both sides and figure out a way. I'm going to use needle nose pliers to crank it down so they lock lock down on this thing and and you want to cinch it so you know it's putting pressure on both sides and squeezing this stalk and that makes sure that the stalk doesn't move and the wiring is protected inside that lamp tube everything is good so having said all that what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove this one more time I'm going to paint them and then I'm going to install them on both sides and um, I need to when I reinstall this uh, reflector I have to remelt these tabs over the reflector holes. So this isn't made to be worked on. It's made to be destroyed if you try to take it apart. So I'm, but I'm gonna get around that. I'm either going to melt the tabs or I'm gonna hot glue back onto these. So when I come back, I should be able to show you a finished product, unless there's a problem, and then I'll come back and talk about the problem. Okay, so here we have the printed parts installed on the, the tail light assembly. They actually do serve a structural purpose because I'm cranking down on the nuts on the inside of the blinker socket as well as on the in, inner bracket here. And if there was nothing there, it would, it would just draw the socket closer to the bracket. So this 3D printed piece is actually sandwiched in between there and it, it helps maintain that distance and it helps me be able to tighten these nuts down really hard and so this thing is really rigid and it's not going anywhere. So next I have to install these reflectors, the light bulbs, and the lenses, and uh, this will be ready to go. One note on the reflectors, I did have to cut away some material to release the reflectors and so I'm going to try to go back with a soldering iron and remelt these plastic tabs to hold the reflectors back in place. Almost like I need to add plastic. <clears throat> Pretty 
very solid. <clears throat> Almost looks stock. Time to get it on the scooter. Okay. Alright, everything works. So I consider this a success. The main difference between these blinker stalks and the ones that come uh, stock with the scooter is that the ones that come with the scooter are rubber and they're flexible. And I guess the idea is that, you know, this, this scooter might go through some rough terrain or, you know, who knows, it might just be abused a little bit. And if uh, it were these blinkers were to come into contact with something, the stalk would flex and it wouldn't damage the blinkers. So that is no longer the case. So if any if these blinkers hit anything now, they're probably going to break. But this is the best thing I could come up with with uh, what I had, and I think it's going to be a good enough solution, especially for the type of use that this particular scooter gets. I don't think we have to worry about that. So I hope you enjoyed uh, joining me with this little journey on designing and, and uh, fixing this issue I had with these blinkers. Uh, if you like this type of stuff, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.